Now joining us is Max Kaiser to get into all of this. To, uh, top stockbroker, retired inventor of the Hollywood Stock Exchange, virtual trading technologies for Counter and Fitzgerald, uh, now used on many stock markets in the world. And he joins us to break down what he calls the uh, casino gulag model. And that's exactly what it is. And I want to get his take on just in, in Europe, they're trying to ban uh, any criticism of government. That was mainstream news yesterday. Here they're doing it as well because they have to. It's an authoritarian execution. So I've thrown out all these issues. Uh, what's happening worldwide, the QE Unlimited, the new Fed chief, uh, all of it. We're going to talk Bitcoin, everything, for the balance of the hour with Max Kaiser. But you heard my intro, Max, about how scientific this takeover is in their own words. Uh, if this was a football game, where's free humanity on the board versus the corporate psycho guild who compete with each other on how evil they can be? Uh, where is humanity right now, Max Kaiser? Hey, Alex, how's it going? You know, I'm going to be uh, trying to get down to Austin uh, to see you in January. I'm on down. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that trip. But um, listening to you talk right there, there's a couple of ideas that I have. One is called digital apartheid. The other one is called interest rate apartheid. So let's talk about digital apartheid for a second as it relates to Obamacare. If you notice, uh, over the past few years, we have been... Uh, exposed via the Snowden revelations to an unbelievably sophisticated digital infrastructure for spying that seems to work flawlessly. We also have been given Obamacare, which is a digital product that's a shambles. And this is the digital apartheid. If you live on the right side of the digital apartheid wall, you have access to flawless technology to spy, to commit corporate espionage, to commit all kinds of uh, insider trading. If you live on the wrong side of the digital apartheid wall, you end up with Obamacare, which is like a ghetto, which is like a slum. And that's it, how it, they've it, always done it. Red tapes for the little guy, not for the globalist. This is literally like that stuff cops have they can shoot that's like goo to tie you down. Well, you know, red tape is uh, bureaucracy has always been around and it slows things down. And there's the state behind it and the state hires a lot of employees and there's uh, too much state uh, payroll that gets into in the way of building a, a vibrant economy. But this is more insidious than that. This is a program of what I call digital apartheid, where the program is to create two classes of individuals of have and have nots. Then, there, then there's interest rate apartheid, which is, I've, been, I've talked about this on your show before. If you are on the right side of the interest rate apartheid wall, you're a partner at Goldman Sachs or you're a partner at one of these big firms, you can borrow money at 0%. But if you live on the wrong side of the apartheid wall, you end up paying 16%, 20%, 30%, or a payday loan. Here in the UK, they have a payday loan shop called Wanga that charges an annualized rate of interest of 5,000%. Uh, the, and these people that run the Wanga interest uh, payday loan shop are some of the biggest contributors to the conservative government, the Cameron government. So here you have the government supporting a company that charges 5,000% uh, against a payday loan uh, to encourage the creation of this ghetto where people are, don't have access to capital anywhere near at the rate that if the friends of Cameron... And but, but I mean, let's go back to the Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and others. They're allowed to not just have 0%. They're able to create tens of trillions a month in fake garbage counterfeit derivatives and then have government bail those out, giving them actual value. So that's that's always the plan. But briefly, going back to your... You know, let, me, let, me follow up on, let me follow up on that a little bit because um, we live now in an interesting world where in the UK or in the United States, the uh, growth of the economy is not needed to support the economy. It, the, you don't need workers in the UK. You don't need workers in America. You don't need their tax revenues because the insiders, when they need money, they just print it. They just use the, either the Federal Reserve Bank or the Bank of England to print all the money they want. It's like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia you have a ruling elite, and then you have the vast majority live in abject poverty because the ruling elite, whenever they need more money, they just turn on the oil tap. They just, you know, they're part of OPEC and they just drill for more oil, but they don't need the population. The population might get a bit of a stipend, but there's this huge gap between the princes and the rest of the population. In America, it's turning into the same thing because 
You've got the princes on Wall Street who can turn, just go to the Fed and get all the money they want, virtually an unlimited amount of money at 0% interest rate. So that they don't need, they don't need workers. They don't need your tax revenue. They don't need you, you're expendable. Beautifully Same said, thing. beautifully said. We're about to go to break, but then meanwhile, MSNBC and CNN, they're all debating all the racial division to keep us fighting with each other as we're all being abused by the foreign offshore, above the law, tax exempt mega banks and the insurance companies making record profits on the Obamacare that they wrote. When we come back, I want you to elaborate on uh, this genius way you put this, Max Kaiser, because it really okay. is something people can crystallize and understand. This is the ultimate discrimination, the ultimate tax debt slavery. But I want to go back to the first apartheid, the digital, because they said that going back uh, about 18 years ago when they set up Internet 2 Consortium, that they're going to kill the old web, surveil it, tax it, control it, but create their super private web for the top corporations and governments. And that's now what they're setting up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go back favorite, the Life Straw. The Crystal Quest shower filter system. And the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Folks, if you've been sitting it out and not fighting the tyrants and not getting involved, you are under scientific attack. And you should take that personal. I'll guarantee if I walked up to an average guy that doesn't even think of himself as a tough guy and slapped his wife right across the face, he'd get up and fight me. I guarantee if I walked up to just a regular 150-pound you know, guy that thinks he's a wimp, started punching his five-year-old son in the face, he'd get up and fight me. If, if, if your neighbor came over every day and had their dog go to the bathroom and right in front of you, you'd come out and say, hey, quit doing that, Bob. But the globalists do all these horrible things to us. I mean, they are openly under the federal government teaching two plus two equals five in Common Core. You're not allowed to say mother and father. That's hurtful. Russell Brand's been told by Salon that it's, it's, it's hateful to women to say that he thought a woman was beautiful. It's a war on reality. These are not liberals, they're authoritarians. And they work with the fake right-wing people as well. That's why the Republican leadership's coming out of the Tea Party right now. The real Ron Paul Tea Party, folks. Not the co-opted one that Karl Rove tried to take over. He failed. But look at the school test teaches kids, commands of government officials must be obeyed by all. I forgot to call 590, our local affiliate, and get it. About a month ago, I gotta get this. I want you guys to call him from the last time Arde Saveda was on the morning show. He said, point blank, obey a police officer's commands no matter if you know they're wrong or illegal. And you, quote, won't get hurt. That flies in the face of common law, common sense, the Constitution. And, you know, I don't even like to attack the police chief. He's very charming, says he's my friend and all this. But the point is, he says so much evil stuff. That's what they're teaching. Total submission to government is tyranny. It's a recipe for hell on earth, guaranteed. Max, it's a short segment, long segment coming up, but your eloquent breakdown it is so key about how, and this is the essence. They get us obsessing on saying brown bag is racist. You'll be, you'll be, lose your job if you work for the government in in Seattle if you bring a brown bag because that's there's no history of that being racist. No claim, no nothing. It just means cheap, you know, paper you put your lunch in. Everybody knows that. But if they can expand it out to everything's racist except really hurting everybody. I mean, it's so elementary. They want us looking at all this other side stuff that isn't even real in most cases while they engage in the electronic and in the other forms of apartheid. Please continue, Max Kaiser. Yeah, well, I'll add to this, uh, to this apartheid theme. We, we talked about interest rate apartheid. We talked about digital apartheid. 
There's another form of apartheid, and it goes back to what you were saying earlier about Nazis in Germany, and of course they had a lot of U.S. corporations like IBM, Coca-Cola, and J.P. Morgan were very active supporting the Nazis at that time. So was Walt Disney and the Disney Corporation. And we see evidence of this today with the what I would say is a copyright apartheid. You see, the history of the Internet is about really the Internet versus Walt Disney Corporation in Hollywood. Disney has every 20 years fought in Congress to extend copyright to protect Mickey Mouse, because every 20 years, Mickey Mouse is set to enter the public domain. And remember, Thomas Jefferson argued that there should not be any intellectual property rights, that everything should be in the public domain. But they compromised, and they gave intellectual property a 14-year copyright monopoly plus a 14-year extension. Well, thanks to Disney, that copyright is now lifetime plus 70 years, or what Lawrence Lessig would call, he's a professor at Stanford University, a perpetual copyright. And why this qualifies as apartheid is versus the internet and why it's active right now is that corporations in Hollywood want you or they want to force the price of ideas and intellectual property up just like they're forcing everything else up out of reach from the general population. But it's worse than that under these treaties as you know Max are trying to get through they put controls on your speech before it's made, which is a total form of slavery in the name of protecting their copyright. But that's all put in place to protect Disney's and other intellectual property right monopolies. And you saw this played out last year spectacularly when the MPAA, headed up by Chris Dodd, went after Aaron Schwartz. And according to his father at the funeral, Aaron Schwartz was hounded to death by the government. Aaron Schwartz killed himself. Because yeah, they really they, murdered him. It's clear they murdered him. But, I mean, yeah, they, they threatened him with 50 or 60 years in prison, and they tried to get a plea bargain for two or three years in prison. He, he was getting married. He said, I'm not giving up. I'm going to beat him. He was becoming a hero. They came to his house and hung him, but go ahead. Well, they, Aaron Schwartz, effectively, was a martyr for the this idea of intellectual property freedom on the internet. And this is another form, another insidious form of apartheid that you see playing out and creating this vast gap between information that's freely available and information that now costs money. Hollywood wants the internet to be like HBO, where everyone pays to view and you don't create anything yourself. Because every time you try to create something for yourself on the internet, you have to reference something else because all creation is referenced from all other creation. Okay, all look, we're come coming back, we're stories. coming back. Long segment. I want to break this down. This is so key here. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the bottom line. There is a scientific system of total control in the globalist own words that has been basically established in this country and worldwide. And the globalists admit this in their own words, gamed stock markets, just like casinos. And then we've got a major East Coast uh, casino owner, you know, in the news saying, let's nuke Iran preemptively. Uh, it's literally ruled by, by mafia, by gangsters, by thugs who have used the development of technological systems to wage war on reality and to wage war on any independent opposition. That's why they instinctively want to get rid of the middle class. I mean, this is really a horrible situation. And I don't know how we get out of it. I don't know how we controvert it. I don't know how we pull out of it because, because it's so bad. 
It's so serious. It's so unspeakable. And it's so documented. We're going to go back to Max Kaiser here in just a moment, but here are some of the headlines. Obamacare site crashes minutes before Sebelius' testimony. She's now come out and said, blame her. That's the quote. She says, it's all her fault. Here it is. We have that queued up, don't we? Hold me accountable for this debacle. And then hold Obama, and then he leaves. No, it's the big insurance companies owned by the big banks that wrote this. And by the way, they're in the news doubling their profits since it passed three years ago and set to double them again. And they're in the news saying, no, we want it fully implemented because we want the really big quadruple profits. Uh, here is the headline. Insurers oppose Obamacare extension as a danger to profits. And that's being put out in press releases and on the news. This is the type of of stuff that's going on. This is from Business Week from Bloomberg. And, and literally, I have Obamacare supporters call and they go, no, it'll get fixed later. I want my free stuff. You could get free charity care. Now, this bill lets hospitals, even charity ones, refuse you. And I gave the subsection. I've had medical doctors on. We warned you. I mean, it's just, it's death panels. It's death. It's pure evil. But you guys have to admit you've been conned. Where the buck stops, some see a bystander. New York Times whitewashing for Obama. I want to get into the digital apartheid and, and, and other systems of apartheid with Max Kaiser. But, but Max, specifically on Obamacare, we called it, we broke it down, we knew what it would be. This is the opposite of socialist health care for folks that even want that. Why is the system so bold now? Is it that it's not just one dictator or one ruling party? It's a global corporate group above the law, tax exempt. They know the public's not sophisticated enough to figure out how it's happening. And so it's free reign, but, but shouldn't the elite themselves be scared of their own hubris and the fact that they have free reign? And, and, well, and the, the system in place now is a dictatorship. So um, you have Obama is a figurehead for a dictatorship. And a dictatorship doesn't really have to answer to anybody. And they'll put you in prison. And people will gladly go to prison if you give them, uh, you know, free access to online gambling. Etc. What I call the prison gulag mentality, the, the model. But I wanted to get back to this whole copyright apartheid idea because, you know, it's funny. You play the Star Wars music and the Star Wars theme on your show, and of course, Star Wars, the original Star Wars, when that was being written by Lucas, he consulted very heavily with Joseph Campbell, who wrote the very famous book, A Hero with a Thousand Faces, about it archetypes. Talks about, yes, archetypes and the recurrence of archetypes and stories throughout history. The problem with this with this copyright lifetime plus 70 copyright regime that Hollywood wants and is imposing is that when people try to write new stories, Hollywood says, no, we own the rights to those stories. So uh, they are by by creating this division uh, between you and access to your own history, to access to your own being as a human being and part of a, a long ongoing history. They have created effectively a digital lobotomy. Because people cannot even access ideas anymore without being billed by one of these Hollywood or intellectual property behemoths like a Microsoft, et cetera. So this is how they've created this digital lobotomy by using copyright law and copyright extension law so that it's lifetime plus 70 years and claiming that all the stories, all the hero with a thousand faces, all the thousand stories throughout history are owned by these corporations. Disney took German folk tales like uh, Snow White and others and copyrighted them or uh, and now they claim that they own those stories. So now people try to do stories like that. They get sued by Disney. So they have and they same thing. Extent, they took a Hans Christensen's The Little Mermaid and then copyrighted it when it was open source. Right. So they've taken that public domain of stories that we've you know taken hundreds of thousands, you know, thousands of years to develop. And they claim ownership. And so now when you go to try to be creative, and that's part of being a human being is to be creative, create things. But if you have don't have access to even being creative because sure. someone will come down to you and say, that's we own that. You can't and by the way, it's idea. Hans Christian Anderson. I was going from memory there. But, but uh, you're absolutely right. And they're now even taking the classics that are open source and then saying this printing is copyright. And then going after people who then put out a movie 
off of that claiming that they've copyrighted it or they'll take government film footage of nukes going off and then do a false copyright and for those that don't know there's been a bunch of companies out there that if you just take a snippet of an article and put it in your article we've had ap and people tell us you can't even put a paragraph of our stuff in an article quoting us and i'm like but it's totally fair use or, 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 or we've had warner brothers and i challenged them and had to do it behind the scenes in court and they backed off right in the saying, saying i can't i can't review the batman in the constitution yeah. there's a provision called fair use and fair use is for educational purposes and other purposes and there's there used to be a thing called the public library where you could go in and read a book take out a book for a week and read that book but now these libraries have been totally uh, libraries have been totally infiltrated and this whole idea of fair use has been subverted so that there is no more fair use and you end up when this uh, situation we have now where all stories are owned by these mega corporations and it creates a uh, this uh, situation where people are even afraid to think because they might be billed or, or somehow invoiced if you if you write an email i wouldn't be surprised before too long you'd write an email and you start to use a phrase in your email and then you get a bill at the end of the month from microsoft or disney uh, saying, actually well, google came out last month and said they are reading your email to make sure nothing copyright is in it right so uh, either they will just take put, push you off the grid so that's part of the digital apartheid now you're living in a digital no man's land or they send you a bill, and if you can't pay the bill, they'll lend you money at 16, 17, 18 percent. That's an interest rate apartheid. Uh, or uh, they'll just stick you in uh, one of their other prisons. And remember what McCain said. He, he's about six years ago. He said, "We'll blow your computer up with remote commands, fry your computer." That's what they want. Total control. Let me ask you this question. Economically, geopolitically, how are things going for the kleptocrats? What do you make of the you know thirteen million dollar fines? on uh, co companies like Chase at the top of the pyramid, slap on the rest, uh, other, other points that are important, Max. Well, the, the greatest thing I saw in the last week was the quote that came out between a meeting between Barack Obama and Eric Schmidt, the uh, Google chair, where Barack Obama asked Eric Schmidt, should we be worried about Bitcoin? And of course, Eric Schmidt uh, was clueless even about what Bitcoin was at that moment. In the meantime, Bitcoin has surged to become the Napster of currencies, to totally be threatening to all central banks and bankers everywhere. And as the days go on, we're finding out this to be the case. And of course, the big story this week was somebody bought Bitcoins in 2009 for $57, and now they're worth $800,000. He just bought an apartment in Norway. And these types of stories are bringing a lot of attention to Bitcoin. Who is really behind Bitcoin? It, the, the, they are activists who hate bankers. So you've got a group of folks back in 2009 who put what's called a Bitcoin protocol onto the internet, which, which is a fan, which is, I think, the most remarkable piece of technology and insight since you're going back to Copernicus, you know, who, who reasoned that in fact the, the, the sun was at the center of the, of the solar system and not the earth. At the time, he got a lot of flack for that. The creators of Bitcoin have figured out that you could take the encryption algorithms used for sending encrypted emails and you could turn that into a currency that would be completely stateless and completely uh, safe to use outside of all government interference. It's a, it's a complete ingenious idea. And it's changing to the entire global economy. Well, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I totally believe in free, open digital currencies, believe it is the way of the future. It gives the power of fiat to the people and the power of choice, and a bunch will emerge, and whatever's the most trusted and the best will become preeminent, and it could take the globalist out of the equation. My issue is I believe whatever the first big one is, they're going to try to sabotage it, demonize it, come after it. So I haven't endorsed it to my listeners because I, when it come, you know, ends up getting brought down, if it does, I don't want to be connected to that just because I understand how volatile and dangerous it is. But I think out of pure speculation. Well, I understand that, but look, look, look at this. So they busted Silk Road recently. Silk Road, online marketplace where a lot of illicit activity was going on. The FBI bought creator. Uh, they then found themselves in possession of lots of Bitcoins. Uh, some of the bitcoins they found the password to and discovered 30 or 35 million dollars other bitcoins that they did not have the password to they are completely incapable of cracking into that bitcoin cash because the bitcoin network right now is bigger than 500 supercomputers it's something like 60,000 computers distributed around the world they go through this 
Bitcoin protocol, and they're discovering what I you could call precious numbers that are as precious as precious metals or precious diamonds. Well, sure, that's what and they do with the whole fiat banking system using it against us. No, this no, 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 this no, inverts no, 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 it. No, fiat, fiat banking system is money that has no intrinsic value whatsoever. Bitcoins have intrinsic value, like gold or silver, and that's the big difference. Except and that explain it is why they do, because people put original value into it? Because there's two reasons. The system that it requires to solve the mathematical equations to unlock these, these uh, numbers it is so huge that that itself is the value. The value is the network. The network is the value. And then the numbers themselves are extraordinarily valuable. They're, for example, you, as you know, as your listeners probably know, there's been an ongoing hunt for prime numbers. And prime numbers are very rare. And scientists are looking for these prime numbers, and they are very happy to find one. The Bitcoin protocol is similar in that it finds numbers that fit in with the protocol that are also extremely rare. And you need this network of thousands and thousands of computers working simultaneously to unlock the, these numbers. So that's the intrinsic value. And it has, and then it has all the attributes of a currency, and it's a medium of exchange. So now I understand your point. You know, you don't want to jump into it and recommend something that'll blow up. Let's wait to see if it has a good adoption rate. At the moment, if you if you read the Bitcoin press, you notice that it does have an excellent adoption rate. You've got people like Second Market in New York City that have introduced a Bitcoin investment trust, where it's now become an asset class. Sure, that makes me think that it might have elitists behind it who want to control this type of technology when it comes out. You so they've well, blame, you know, you can't blame hedge funds necessarily for wanting to jump into things that make money. Hedge funds are also stateless. Hedge funds are not. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. I understand yeah, all that. It. I understand okay. that. But listen, okay. getting off of Bitcoin for a moment, because there's so much other stuff going on. What is the state of the global economy? What's happening with the bond market? What are your predictions for gold, uh, for war? I mean, you, I mean, let's let's take a walk on the waterfront here. Uh, tell me what's going on. Well, in, in the in the UK and in the US, they're very similar. I, I think in the UK, it's really more of a, a good demonstration of what is going on than anywhere else right now. They've the central banker in charge, Mark Carney, the new guy who came in from Canada, he has just announced that he wants to expand the balance sheet of the Bank of England up to $9 trillion. They've already expanded it from $800 billion four and a half years ago to two, two and a half trillion. He wants to take it to nine trillion pounds. So, and his message to the world is, you, we will swap all of your toxic debt from all of your banks for fresh uh, guilt, the equivalent of a treasury bond for the UK. So the UK is emerging as the global garbage dump for bad debts. And Mark Carney has now given himself extraordinary regulatory power because they've consolidated several regulatory offices under Mark Carney. And he's let the people know around the world, banks around the world, that all the toxic debt in Europe, America, South America, and Asia, we will take your toxic debt and print guilt. So he's becoming the enormous garbage collector. He's a Bernie Madoff on steroids. He's a Bernie Madoff to the tenth degree. And this is and the UK economy, as a result, you've got another another apartheid happening in terms of housing. You've got huge rich oligarchs who get the money for free and then buy apartments, and they've pushed out everybody else. Very few people can afford to live in the city of London anymore. Who, who are not part of the oligarch class. People are just fleeing the city because it's too freaking expensive because exactly what Mark Carney's doing. So he's he's put on the we're, we are open sign to every sh crook and oligarch in the world. They'll take all the toxic debts that you accumulated in all the dodgy deals you did over the past five to 10 years and we'll swap you with fresh guilt, pound guilt, and you can keep the Ponzi scheme going. Now, we see the same thing in, the, in, 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 in America. There was the farce of let's taper from the Federal Reserve. That was a farce, as your guest Peter Schiff you know, has said on your show brilliantly and elsewhere. There's, there's no, not going to be any taper of, of buying by the Fed of Treasuries to keep the Ponzi scheme going. There is a high likelihood that they will expand quantitative easing from $85 billion a month to 100, 120. You know, Mark Faber said on a show on CNBC last week, he would anticipate quantitative easing could go to a trillion dollars a month. I mean, that sounds incredible, but if you go back to Weimar Republic, Germany in the mid 20s, the currency crashed. No, no, you're absolutely right. We got to go to break. Stay there, come back and tell us more and then tell us about some of the other projects you're working on and what you see coming up in the future. Max Kaiser, maxkaiser.com uh, is our guest. 
And he'll be leaving us in about 10, 12 minutes, and we'll take some calls, and we have another special guest joining us uh, just briefly here, folks. Some of the news up on Infowars.com. Shoppers submit to naked body scans to enter candy store. I'm not joking. That's up on Infowars.com, breaking right now. Shoppers submit to naked body scans to enter candy store. Uh, also, Facebook photo shows another Google mystery barge off the coast of Maine. I'm going to ask Max if he knows what these are. I happen to have some intel. They're just getting ready to go completely offshore with their criminal ops. Uh, White House orders insurance companies not to criticize Obamacare. Well, I mean, they, they, they wrote it, so why would they criticize it? Well, they mean small ones that didn't write it, and it's meant to shut them down. Don't defend yourself. Just lay down, it's, or you're racist. Uh, Ten signs that Obamacare is going to wreck the U.S. economy. Betrayed. Democrats now admit they knew all along that millions would lose their existing health plans. Uh, and that's just uh, some of the news up on Infowars.com. And Google's out promoting brain chips again. It's the latest, trendiest thing. If you don't like it, you're, you're just a square. Uh, briefly, going to break here. We have more of it coming in today and more of it coming in next week. So if you want to go ahead and order the amazing nascent atomic iodine uh, that is patented, uh, you can do so at InfoWarsLife.com. And you can see videos there with Dr. Group, myself, and others breaking down what this does to the thyroid, what it does to block radiation, detoxify fluoride. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Your purchase makes the transmission possible. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Many anthropologists all right, Max Kaiser's with us. We appreciate him joining us. Max, you were getting into this whole economic thing. Obviously, it's going towards hyperinflation. They're putting police states in place to control things during that period. Can they get away with everything? They seem to think they can, but as you pointed out, Eric Schmidt didn't know what Bitcoin was. He says, we don't have any privacy and don't deserve it. But then he makes his girlfriends wear uh, Michael Jackson hoods over their heads. Uh, I mean, these guys are all crazy. Uh, I, 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 mean, I think in the final equation, they're really just crooks, and they're not invincible. Uh, what does Max Kaiser have to say? Well, just a couple of late-breaking things that are happening during the break here. First of all, you just said they banned the word mother and father. How do they do that? They use copyright law. They'll say, we own the word mother and father. That's, that's the problem, of perpetual copyright law. Now you can't even use the word mother and father. They use copyright law. That's how they create the copyright apartheid. Well, is a political correctness a type of, of, of copyright where they then just want to everything it. becomes it's racist? It's not about political correctness. They'll present it as being somehow politically motivated or ideologically motivated. No, it's about just they want to own it. They want to own the words. And then if you ever use the words, they want you to pay them. And if you can't pay, they'll lend you the money. It's all the economics. There's no ideology whatsoever. If everyone thinks this is ideologically driven, they're falling into the trap. It's just money, money, money. Now, before we get off the air, I want to talk about what I want to talk about, which is that, you know, I'm starting a new crowdfunding um, site called Start Join, and this crowdfunding site is going to have a top-up fund. So the more people that like the page, because it doesn't actually start until December, but I'm going to be tracking the number of likes on the Facebook page associated with Start Join, and as the number of likes goes up, I'm going to increase that fund, the top-up fund, which is going to be essentially money that I'm going to be giving away to projects. So, uh, yes, this is very new. This has just been up in the last couple of weeks. But this is me trying to bring something economic to the table 
to rebalance what's going on here so that everyone has access to funding and everyone has access to the benefits of having funded stuff. Because right now, nobody has access to the funding and nobody gets the benefit. And by the way, we're now seeing some of the big, uh, you know, classic ones that are out there, not letting people have pro-gun or libertarian projects. So it's important to have diversity out there with these crowdfunding systems. Yeah, exactly. And this is, as you know, goes to the technologies I've developed for 15 years. So we were going to bring some new things to the to the party. But right now, I'm just trying to get as many likes as possible on this on the uh, Facebook Start Join page, which I think I, you might have it up on your on your screen right now uh, as just a way to kick this thing off, which will be coming into beta in December. And the more likes I get, the bigger the fund, which means the more money I'm going to be giving away. Very interesting, Max. In closing. How bad is the hyperinflation going to get, and when will we really see it start to get worse? Well, in hyperinflation or in any type of major inflation, you are referring to something called the velocity of money. Right now, all the money that's being printed by the Fed or other central banks just sits on the balance sheets of the banks, and they use it amongst themselves to make quick gains amongst themselves. It doesn't enter the general economy. But once... You have a big creditor, let's say China, decides that, you know what, we've got four trillion of these dollars sitting Hold around. Hold on, do five more minutes. We're back in one minute. I want to finish up with that and then ask you about J.P. Morgan Chase announcing they're not going to let you take your money out of the country. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Folks, the story's up on Infowars.com. Last remaining lead smelter in the USA, closing after 120 years. They have shut down with environmental regulations to where it's impossible. It's like Obama said, you can have a coal power plant, but we will bankrupt you. It's impossible to lead smelt. That's why we import it all from China now. And now they're going to control the importation. That's how they're going to ban your bullets. And they're not playing games. So there you go. And they're going to go after every other metal you try to use for bullets. And they're going to buy them up to drive up the prices. This is economic warfare. Max Kaiser getting into money velocity. And how bad it's going to get because it is starting to get out in the economy. I see inflation everywhere. It's really bad. And the media says there's no inflation. There's no inflation. The dinosaur uh, kleptocrat Decepticon media. But how does that tie into not just uh, Chase but other big banks are saying you can wire money in but not out of the country. And you've got to get an approved special checking account and pay us. And you said this years ago. It would get to the point before the inflation really got bad where your money will be like garbage you've got to pay to have taken away, Max Kaiser. Well, there's a couple of things there, Alex. Uh, first of all, you have to understand that although the inflation rate right now is high, if you put into the calculation things like food and energy, the inflation rate's really six, seven, eight percent. It's not the two or two and a half percent the government says. The government lies about the real number of inflation because all of the entitlement programs are tied to the official inflation rate, that being like uh, Social Security. So they're incentivized to under-report that number. That's why they always under-report that number. The real is correct that the real inflation, if you really add up the cost of what people actually buy at the supermarket, it's really six, seven, eight percent. That's true. But even though that's high, there's another big factor going on, which is that the shadow banking system, which is the derivatives market, which is $700 trillion in size versus the global GDP of roughly $60 trillion in size, that is collapsing at faster than 7 or 8% a year. It's collapsing at 10, 15, 20% a year. The derivatives shadow banking system is collapsing. And that's why these banks have to constantly be bailed out by the central banks who are constantly engaged in programs of quantitative easing because they're trying to keep what are called zombie banks alive. And the reason they're zombie banks is because their balance sheets are collapsing faster than the economy can grow to generate the taxable income to pay off these debts. Now, going forward, because there is no velocity, because there are so many zombie banks, because there is so much money just sitting there not doing anything because they're zombies, you have countries like China that have accumulated up to $4 trillion worth of money uh, as a creditor nation, including over a trillion dollars in dollars, with nowhere to spend it until such time as they decide to get panic stricken because maybe the dollar finally starts to collapse in the wake of this obvious sign of no economic growth. And they dump those dollars and other currencies onto the market 
in a classic hyperinflation where they want to spend them quickly before the value collapses. Then all this pent up hyperinflation that's been pent up and kind of off, off the radar for 10, 15 years all happens like a thunderclap at once. That's what everyone needs to be prepared for because at that moment, it'll be way too late is there any way to escape the Weimar? Because the globalists admit in their doublespeak that they're trying to have a depression to somehow black hole the inflation so they only have inflation in luxury goods, and we see that. No, no, no. They say that there is deflation. They say that there is a recession because they are constantly trying to convince people that they don't deserve to make a minimum wage or a livable wage. They, they People at uh, McDonald's and Walmart. Well, look, look, look at how they promoted Obamacare. By the U.S. government. That's right. They're being subsidized by the U.S. government because they, they, they must always talk about the collapse of the inflation, which they include wages, as the reason why they need to keep printing money. But that's a false statement. They print the money to keep the zombie banks alive. They don't care. As I said before, they don't care if people have jobs because they can just print money. Why would I care if I had a job? Exactly, Max. Thank you so much. We're out of time. We'll have you back soon. Thank you so much. We have a special guest coming up. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars nightly news, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.